everybody, and welcome back to PDA, your handheld guide to understanding psychological data analysis. Today we'll be covering independent t-tests. The difference between independent and dependent t-tests is that the two samples do not rely on each other. Whatever happens in sample A will not affect whatever happens in sample B. For today's example, we're going to use two laptop companies, brand A and brand B. And we want to see if there's any difference in the number of problems reported between the two brands. For brand A, we have a sample size of 100, and the mean number of problems reported was 50. For brand B, we also have a sample size of 100, and the mean number of problems re reported were 25. The standard deviation for brand A is 2.14, and the standard deviation for brand B is 1.77. Now that we have all of this information, we can go ahead and move over to the t-test formula. This is much different from the dependent t-test and looks a lot more intimidating, but it's not too rough. The formula is mean 1 minus mean 2 minus the null hypothesis, hypothesis, which is 0 in this case, because we're measuring for a difference. Not anything higher, not anything lower, but just a difference. So the null hypothesis would be that there is no difference which translate out as zero. All of this is divided by, uh, hold on with me here a second, it's gonna take a bit, the square root of the standard deviation divided by the number for group A, plus the standard deviation divided by the number for group B, and all that has to be square rooted. And then you can divide the top part. So let's put this formula into action with our sample. For mean one, we've got 50, for mean 2, there's 25, and we're going to head, put our line there, divide it, and square root of 2.41, which was the standard deviation of A, divided by 100, which was the number for A, plus 1.77, which was the standard deviation of B, divided by 100, which was the number for B. And when you do all that, you should get a t-score of 122.55. And if you look in your book, oh, we don't have the degrees of freedom yet. And as we learned last time, the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. So in this case, it would be 100 minus 1, which is 99. Now, you won't always get the same number in each sample. You may have 50 up here and 20 up here. In that case, you take n minus 1 for each of them, so, so it would be 49 and 19. And then you take the lowest degrees of freedom that there are. In this case, we'll stick with 99. So we go up to the table, and oh, they don't have 99. If you can't find your real degrees of freedom in the table, go to the closest one. So 99 falls between 80 and 100, but it falls closer to 100. For degrees of freedom being at 100 with a .05 level of significance in a two-tailed test, you need a t-score of 1.984 or higher. This is obviously quite much higher, therefore there is a significance between the brands. If you have any more questions or you'd like to know a little bit more about independent t-tests, have a look at the link at the end. Have a good day guys!